Holy Hour An Hour of Prayer with Jesus Agonizing in Gethsemane In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Place yourself, O devout soul, in the presence of your most beloved Savior, and bring to mind the night in which Jesus, having instituted the Holy Eucharist to be your food, leaves the cenacle with his apostles to go to the Garden of Olives, there to begin that most cruel passion by which he was to save the world. A deathly sadness shows itself on the brow and reveals itself in the words of the afflicted Jesus. A deathly pallor clouds that face on which but now had shone a heavenly beauty. Meanwhile, the sorrowful Savior rests his gaze upon you as though he would say to you, Dear soul, who art the cause of so much anguish to me, stay with me but for an hour and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. But know you that on the night of my agony I sought in vain for one to console me. I looked for one who would comfort me, and I found none. O adorable Jesus, can there ever be a creature so ungrateful and so hard of heart as to refuse to pass an hour in thy company? remembering those mysteries of supreme pain and supreme love accomplished in the obscurity of the night of thy passion in the Garden of Gethsemane? O good Jesus, behold me present before thee. Deign to reveal to me the greatness of thy pains in the excess of love which caused thee to become a victim for my sins and for the sins of all men. O ye redeemed, pray come, all to the Garden of Olives, where his blood in streamlets the Redeemer so save us sheds, and with him at least for an hour withhold ourselves adoring, supplicating, thanking, compassionating his sufferings. The Sadness of Jesus My soul is sorrowful even unto death. There is truly no greater suffering than that which can be compared to the pains of death. Now our Savior, who is infallible truth, to make us understand the excess of suffering which came to oppress him as he entered Gethsemane, says that his soul is weighed down by a mortal sadness that the anguish which he endures is such as could cause his death. And having said this, he enters further into the garden, till, reaching the place where he was accustomed to pass the night in prayer, he exhorts his faithful apostles, whom he had brought with him even into the garden, that they might be witnesses to his sufferings, to watch and pray with him. Then, withdrawing from them a stone's throw, he knelt down to begin the most painful and at the same time most generous prayer ever made 
upon earth. The first motive for the sorrow of Jesus was that horrible accumulation of outrage and opprobrium, which in a short time was to rush in upon him like the furious billows of a tempest-tossed sea. In fact, he had hardly left his beloved apostles when there appeared before his mind all the frightful scenes of pain and blood of his impending passion. Treachery, dishonor, scorn, calumnies. Moreover, a scourging so cruel is to lay bare his very bones. But this is not enough. His sacred head must be tormented by a crown of thorns, which are to remain fastened thereon even till death. Furthermore, blows, spittle, mockeries, still this is not enough. He must bear the infamy of a legal condemnation and see himself abhorred by the great ones of his nation and by his own people. Dying then because of so much suffering, he must drag himself to the Mount of Sacrifice with the cross on his lacerated shoulders, falling several times half dead beneath its enormous weight. He must drink the bitter gall, be stripped in the midst of an insolent multitude, allow himself to be nailed hand and foot. Hang for three long hours from those iron nails and remain there, suspended between heaven and earth to expiate by unspeakable pains the iniquities of the human race. Yet this is not enough. To these frightful pangs must be added the most bitter mockery, the most cutting insults and taunts. Then the burning thirst, rendered more tormenting by the vinegar, the abandonment by his father, the immense grief of his beloved mother, the terrible and desolate death. Redeemed soul, purchased by the cruel pains of Jesus, consider your Savior overwhelmed in an abyss of suffering, and this for love of thee, to save thee, to bring thee with him to paradise. Oppressed by so much anguish, Jesus goes back to the three apostles whom he had charged to watch and pray. But he finds them sleeping. There is not one word of comfort for Jesus agonizing, not one sentiment of compassion. In the bitterness of his abandonment, he turns his sorrowful look upon you, O devout soul, to see if he can find in your heart a feeling of compassion and gratitude. And you, have you no word for the good Jesus? What would you have said if you had really found yourself near to him in the night of his agony? Alas, open your heart and do now that which you would have done then, for equally welcome will it be to him, since he always accepts with pleasure the expressions of affection which come from the heart of his faithful ones.
Holy Father, who hast so loved the world as even to sacrifice thy incarnate Son for it, in the name of all the redeemed, I thank thee for this act of thy infinite charity, offering thee in return the most perfect holiness and merits of the same only begotten Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, who, to deliver us from eternal perdition, hast placed upon the adorable humanity of thine only begotten Son the execrable burden of all our iniquities, I offer thee the agony of Jesus in Gethsemane, beseeching thee to grant me the grace to enjoy in eternity the fruits of his unspeakable torments. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, who to reconcile guilty humanity with thy offended majesty, hast subjected thy most innocent Son to the rigors of inexorable justice, on whom were laid the pains merited by our sins. I offer thee the most lovable submission of Jesus in Gethsemane, beseeching thee to grant the conversion and salvation of all sinners. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, how obscured is that Son divine! Oh, how saddened is Jesus in the garden! Oh, heavens, how he weeps for this soul of mine! He sees that his passion will be in vain, for many of the redeemed who will prefer to perish, now rent is the heart so steeped in pain. Jesus anguishes beneath the weight of human iniquity. Already a long hour of anguish has passed for Jesus amid the darkness of the night and in the abandonment by his beloved disciples. The vivid apprehension of the cruel outrages awaiting him has spread terror and fear into his blessed soul. He now feels far more keenly the enormous weight of his mission as Savior of the world. He sees that the time of his immolation has come. Heaven, earth, 
in hell are already armed against him. He must sustain a great battle in which all blows will be hurled against him alone. What does Jesus do? Pallid, trembling, he turns to his father and humbly exclaims, Father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. What response will the humble prayer of the Son of God receive? Heaven is shut. There is no answer. He wishes to endure even this pain to obtain for us humble perseverance in prayer, in constant patience, although heaven seems closed to our supplications. Ah, good Jesus, there is no suffering which thou hast not undergone for our comfort and example. But follow thy Jesus, O my soul, who, urged by love, proceeds further and further on the way of sorrow. The frightful procession of all the sins of all the crimes of the sons of Adam present themselves to his mind and lacerate his heart. Yet he sees that he must take on himself this loathsome burden and appear before the most pure eyes of his father, covered with the filthiness of sin. It is impossible for the human mind to understand or even to imagine the horrible torture which the blessed and most innocent soul of Jesus now suffered. Already he had piteously complained, saying by the mouth of the prophet, The wicked have wrought upon my back. Oh, how greatly oppressed is the dear Savior under the weight of so many sins. But surely the divine Lamb who was about to immolate himself to divine justice, so often offended by men, after having satisfied for human iniquity in sacrificing his precious life upon a gibbet to take away the sins of the world, can he not at least hope that men acknowledging so great a benefit will banish sin forever and remain always faithful to him who suffered so much to save them from eternal death? Ah, poor Jesus, would that it were thus! But instead, a picture more horrible than the preceding opens before his mind. He sees that even after having redeemed mankind by so much suffering and having washed the earth with his blood, even after having infused the divine spirit into his faithful and made the earth a paradise of grace through the Eucharist, ah, even after so many excesses of charity, he still sees sin holding sway in the world. He sees his holy law trampled underfoot, his church and ministers persecuted, his grace neglected, his love despised. And weepingly he says, What profit is there in my blood? Why pour out all my blood? Why die amid the agonies of a gibbet if men, ungrateful for so many benefits, will afterwards give themselves over to the power of the demon into eternal perdition? When will the sway of sin end in the world? And the good Jesus, casting his glance upon all the ages to come, behold sin in all the centuries to follow, in each succeeding year, every day, and at each moment. In the weight of these sins, heavily oppress him and make him repeat, The wicked have wrought upon my back. They have lengthened their iniquity. My soul, wilt thou still be among those who lengthening this chain of sin and repeatedly putting off their promised conversion, wrench from the heart of Jesus that cry so full of righteous sorrow? Oh, how horrible is sin after a God has shed his blood to destroy it! Oh, how horrible is sin in a soul already cleansed by that divine blood! 
in souls united to the heart of Jesus by holy communion. O most afflicted Savior, with great reason dost thou lament and weep. But if Jesus with great reason weeps for the sins of the redeemed in general, what does he not suffer at first seeing the sins of his intimate friends, of the souls consecrated to him? O beloved souls, he exclaims, souls of my peace, who are the intimate friends of my heart, who live in my house, eat of my bread, and nourish yourselves at my table. Why do you pierce my heart by sin? People of my heart, what have I ever done to thee? In what have I grieved thee? I have slaked your thirst with the heavenly waters of my grace, and you have given me gall. I have satisfied you with the precious manna of my flesh, and you have struck me with blows and scourgings. O oh, my people, what have I done to thee? And what have I grieved thee? I have prepared thee a throne in heaven, and you have presented me a gibbet. Dear soul, vineyard, beloved of my heart, what more could I have done for thee that I have not done? What is there that I ought to do more for my vineyard that I have not done to it. And for so much love, you return me brambles and thorns. O oh, my afflicted Savior, why cannot I offer thee my hearts and the hearts of all those men who burn with the fire of perfect love to repay somewhat thy own infinite love? Grieving for my coldness and that of others, I offer thee, O oh, good Jesus, that holy ardor with which the ancient patriarchs sighed for thy coming and that holy zeal by which thy apostles spread thy name throughout the whole world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O suffering Redeemer, I offer thee that perfect and most tender compassion which thy Immaculate Mother pierced in her soul by the sword of sorrow, offered thee at the sight of thy sufferings and that most perfect gratitude with which, for the whole human race, she thanked thee, praised thee, and blessed thee in acknowledging the infinite benefits of thy redemption. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My agonizing Jesus, I, a wretched creature, not being able to give thee that comfort which I would, offer thee the joy given to the Trinity and the angels of heaven, when thou didst fulfill with such pain and with such love the great work of redemption, at the same time beseeching thee that all the redeemed may be made to understand well this mystery of infinite love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prone on the earth the dear Lord has fallen, oppressed by the burden of measureless sorrow, borne down by the weight of our transgressions. O heavenly spirits, just a little comfort, present to the Lord who groans in the garden, who prays, who weeps, who is near to dying. The Great Fiat Contemplate, O redeemed soul, how your Savior, his heart, transpierced by man's ingratitude, falls prostrate in agony upon the ground. He is alone, abandoned, with no one to aid him, who has not refused to extend his hand to the weak and the afflicted, and even to make a resting place of his breast for his apostle, who tired, laid his head upon it. Rise up, faithful soul. The moment has come in which to make Jesus' suffering a return of love. What would you have done if on the night of the Passion you had found yourself in Gethsemane, close to the agonizing Jesus? My dearest Lord, I wish to raise thee up from the earth to offer thee my heart upon which to rest thy drooping head, and then to say a word which will console thee. My most sweet Savior, I love thee. I love thee. I love thee. I wish to see love for thee, to obtain love for thee, to have all love thee. I wish to consume life itself to have thee loved, loved greatly loved always, loved by all thy redeemed. My sweet Jesus, I have said that I would spend even life itself to have thee loved, to make any sacrifice for this, no matter how great. Yet, when I meet some slight contradiction, some small humiliation, a refusal, a reproof, an unkindness, do I bear it? Do I really love sacrifice? Do I rejoice in being able to offer thee the mortification of a passion? Good Jesus, I am ashamed to answer. But here, close to thee, here at the school of suffering and love, I wish to learn, my sweet master, to mortify and sacrifice myself in all things and for love of thee. Meanwhile, the hours of his mortal agony pass slowly for Jesus. 
He, the God of heaven and earth, languishes prostrate upon the ground, and no one is mindful of him. But what are the disciples doing? They sleep. Ah, Jesus, on the night of his passion, had to undergo even this pain of desertion of his dear ones, and he felt in his heart the whole bitterness of it. That sorrow he then accepted, even desired it. But now he does not wish it any longer. Rather, he wants his regime to hold vigil around him, meditating on his passion. But instead, the greater part sleep the sleep of the ungrateful, which consists in the forgetfulness of him who loves and benefits us. Oh, what an excess of ingratitude and hard-heartedness. O oh, good Jesus, thou art not known, for did we but know thee, we would always think of thee, and our hearts would not beat except for thee. Whilst Jesus is grieving alone and prostrate upon the ground, behold, an angel of heaven comes to comfort him. With the humility of an obedient son, Jesus receives his father's messenger, ready to submit to his commands. The angel has come to strengthen him, but not to console him, nor to lighten his pains, nor to take from his hands the bitter chalice. Indeed, he encourages Jesus to bear up under the battle he is to wage and to receive bravely the blows which heaven, the world, and hell will hurl at him. Heaven, because the eternal justice of the Father was about to punish him all the iniquity of men. The world, which unable to endure the holiness of the Son of God, was preparing a cross for him. And hell, which through hatred for the saint of saints, excites the enemies of Jesus Christ to greater cruelty and more spiteful outrage. Wherefore, the angel exhorts him to drink to the very dregs the abominable chalice of human iniquity, to become, as it were, cursed for us, to bear the whole weight of divine vengeance. Meanwhile, justice and mercy await the fiat of Jesus, in which they will be reconciled forever. Heaven awaits it, that it might be peopled by holy men. The earth awaits it, yearning to see the malediction merited by its first sin blotted out by the precious blood of the divine Redeemer. The just, imprisoned in the bosom of Abraham, await it, that they might fly to the embrace of their Creator. Miserable mortals await it, that they might again become the children of God and see the gates of heaven reopened to them. But how greatly does this fiat cost Jesus? He, the most innocent, he, the holy and immaculate one, must needs put on the loathsome garb of the sinner, of the wicked, must needs appear as the guilty one and make our iniquities his own. Immeasurable is the anguish this causes him and makes him repeat, let this chalice pass from me. But at the same time, he sees that we are lost if he does not take the guilt of our offenses upon himself, if he does not consent to the scourges of the punisher justice and wash away our iniquities in his blood. Therefore, with the most generous burst of heroic love, Jesus pronounces his sublime fiat. He says, fiat, Thy will be done, and thus he consents to shoulder all our misdeeds, and as if guilty of them, accepts, yea, even calls upon himself these horrible chastisements. Wherefore he says, Fiat to the thorns, to expiate for our evil thoughts. Fiat to the scourging, to punish in himself our sins of sensuality. Fiat to the insults, the spittle, the blows, to atone for our pride. 
fiat to the vinegar and gall in satisfaction for our numberless sins of speech and gluttony. Fiat to the cross and nails to repair for our disobedience. Fiat to those three hours of fearful agony on the cross to heal all our wounds, to remedy all our evils. Fiat to his death to give us eternal life. O oh, precious fiat, which rejoices heaven, saves the world, and overthrows hell. Fiat that breaks so many chains, dries so many tears. Thanks be to thee, O oh, good Jesus. Thanks for so generous a fiat. I bless thee and thank thee in the name of all men. Holy Father, who in reparation for our rebellious and disobediences didst wish to be honored by the generous fiat of Jesus in Gethsemane, I offer thee that same fiat in expiation for all the offenses which thy adorable majesty has received from my rebellious and stubborn will, beseeching thee to grant me perfect docility and submission through the merits of the same fiat. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, through the glory which the generous fiat of Jesus in Gethsemane procured for thee, I beseech thee to pardon me every fault of rebellion and disobedience, and to grant me the grace henceforth to love, fully submissive to thy holy will, and to the will of my superiors for love of thee. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, through the generous effort and the anguish which the fiat uttered in Gethsemane cost Jesus, I beg thee to grant to me, to all the souls consecrated to thee, and to all Christians, the spirit of holy fortitude and constancy, united to a generosity which will count as light every sacrifice for thy glory. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From lips divine, O heaven has come, the awaited word which gives us life. But alas, to the desolate Lord the cost is great. It costs him a flood of insults and pains. He pays with the blood of all his veins. The price is to die in a sea of sorrow. The Blood of Jesus and Its Fruits My Jesus has now uttered his great fiat, but the effort causes him to fall again upon the earth, crushed beneath the enormous weight with which he had burdened himself. Oppressed on the one hand by the divine justice, which considers him as universal victim upon whom are to be united all sin and its punishment, and on the other hand by his infinite desire to fulfill his divine mission as Redeemer of the world, which latter is preparing for him that baptism of blood so greatly desired by him. Ah, in truth, the good Jesus can now be considered as choice wheat ground between two millstones and as sweet grapes trodden in the winepress. Indeed, such is the intense agony which oppresses his heart that he begins to sweat blood from all his members, in this so copiously that it trickles down to the ground. Oh, how much has that great fiat cost Jesus! Oh, how much he has had to suffer in order to become debtor for our sins! And what shame for me who refuse to make even the least sacrifice whilst I see my God freely become victim for love of me. He was offered because it was his own will. But why, sweet Jesus, why torture thyself thus with infinite pain, thou who with one soul prayer, with one sigh, with one beat of thy heart, couldst have saved the world? But a prophet had already said that the redemption of Jesus would be a copious redemption, and truly it is a copious redemption which he has wrought, for by it we are not only delivered from eternal death, but are moreover restored to the honor enjoyed by the innocent, the just, and the saints. Only a God could have accomplished so great a work. But Jesus is not yet satisfied. In his incomprehensible love, he wishes that by means of his sufferings, there be placed in our hands is something absolutely ours, the rich treasures of his merits, that by them we might obtain every good from the Most High. What more could be desired? Yet there are gifts so great that man could not have dared to ask for them, nor even thought of being able to acquire them. But the infinite charity of our blessed Savior thinks of them, and with the voice of his blood in the size of his afflicted heart, he obtains for us from his Father the supreme grace of being raised up even to the embrace of the divinity by means of the Eucharist which he had that same night instituted. And, as if this is not enough to satisfy a charity which knows no limits, 
He wishes that his spirit, the divine paraclete, be infused and remain permanently in our souls. I shall ask the Father, he had said that same night to his apostles, I shall ask the Father and he shall send you the Holy Spirit. And now, here in Gethsemane, suffering and dripping blood, he fulfills such a promise meriting for us the infusion of the divine paraclete and thus elevating man to the highest degree of happiness, grace, and glory. Jesus can now do no more for us, yet there remains to him one more desire. He remembers that his father has said to him, Ask of me, and I will give thee the nations as thy inheritance. In raising his blood-stained face to heaven, he asked that among those nations promised him as his inheritance, he might have chosen bands of his spouse souls who will be beloved of his heart, faithful disciples following his example, and upon whom he can pour forth the abundance of those graces merited by him with so much pain. Give me souls, give me souls, O Father, and all else will I give thee, even my life which will be consummated on the cross for them. Give me souls. And among all these souls, Jesus also chooses yours, desires it, wants it, asks it with tears of his Father, and for it in particular, renews the offering of himself in all his boundless sufferings. My soul, my soul, how greatly art thou loved by that God whose sweating blood chose thee, desired thee, embraced thee as spouse. And even as in a little while Jesus, from the height of the cross, will say to his mother, Behold thy son, and in the person of John, will consign to her all the redeemed. So in Gethsemane, he turns to his father and says, Behold thy children. I, thy son by nature, hold the place of sinful man, that the sinner might take my place and become thy child by grace. For me, O father, sufferings, for the sinner pardon and peace, for me death, for him life, for me abandonment, for him a perfect, blessed and eternal union with thee. Behold, behold thy children, embrace them. My blood renders them pure, beautiful, and worthy of thee. Father, I wish. Jesus had never before said, I wish, but now he says it. I wish that the souls which thou hast given to me may be one with us, united to us, as I with thee. Remember, O Father, that I have abased myself to become man, that man might be raised up even to God, reigning in thine own glory, for all eternity. Behold the incomprehensible mysteries of love which operate in the heart of a God who sweats blood for men. Behold the admirable fruits of the blood of Jesus. Silence, admiration, and generous love. These, O redeemed soul, soul espoused to a God become man, is the only return you can make to the great and holy and infinite love who immolates himself for thee.
Holy Father, with a heart penetrated with the most vivid gratitude, I thank Thee in the name of all men for giving us a Redeemer so good and so generous, through whom, with infinite advantage, we have recovered the blessings lost by original sin. I offer Thee for the salvation of all the redeemed, the blood which he shed, beseeching Thee to grant that the fruits of the redemption be as copious as the redemption itself, and that the good Jesus be known, loved, and blessed by all the children of Adam for all eternity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, I offer the precious blood of Jesus to obtain from thy mercy the exaltation and increase of the Catholic Church, the conversion of all infidels, heretics, and sinners, the perseverance of the just, and the liberation of the souls in purgatory. I offer it thee for the greater good of my superiors and all my dear ones. Moreover, I offer it thee for the sanctification of my soul and to obtain all the graces desired. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Father, who hast so loved the world as even to sacrifice thine only begotten Son amid great torment for it, grant that the world will now exceedingly love Jesus, show wholehearted gratitude to him, bless and exalt him, and that the souls may be many who are perfectly united and constantly faithful to him, and that among that number may also be found my own poor soul. Holy Father, I offer thee the sighs, the prayers, and the agony of Jesus in Gethsemane, together with the blood he shed, that thou mayest deign to reawaken most vividly in the hearts of all Christians devotion to the admirable mysteries of the redemption, and with it that true and generous spirit of sacrifice which makes the soul so like to Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O precious blood which flows from the heart of God the Savior to cleanse our sins, I love thee, adore thee, 
my hope thou art. The decree of death through thee is cancelled, O precious blood of our loving Jesus. Through thee are reopened the gates of heaven. One more glance at your Jesus, O my soul, O daughter of his love and pain. The long hours of the agony in Gethsemane have already passed to give place to a day of outrage and to the final three hours of torture on the cross. Behold, Judas comes to betray him, and Jesus, like a meek lamb, goes to meet him. Ah, my Jesus, am I to see thee in the arms of a traitor? Ah, no, rather come to my embrace, even into my heart. O oh, good Jesus, for I no longer wish to offend thee, but always to love thee. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 